Radiant Church presents Radiant Stories, a collection of stories that showcase God's faithfulness to take our hopeless situations and craft them into beautiful testimonies of His power, provision, and love. Welcome back to Radiant Stories. I am Anna Rittering, and we're here today with Jenny Rohr. Jenny is here today to talk about adoption, her heart for adoption, her experience with adoption. I would love to hear about your childhood and your family dynamic and how that's kind of affected your relationship with the Lord and what he's put on your heart for adoption itself. So I was adopted when I was a month old in all of my siblings are. So I have three older brothers who are adopted. Two of them are from Seoul, Korea, and Joel and I, my closest brother in age, are from Kansas City, Missouri, um, but we're not biological. So all of us were raised in Grand Rapids in the 90s, living it up, <laughs> <laughs> looking all different colors in our house. <laughs> but it was honestly really great. So it's so funny. My favorite question when people ask me is, when did you realize you were adopted? And I love that. It's a sweet, like, sweet, sweet, innocent question. But the reality is none of us looked like each other. So there, I don't, but I also don't remember there ever being a real conversation. Like, why, why do you look different than me? Or what's the deal? So I just, that's what family looked like. So it wasn't even alarming when I would see other families that didn't all look different. I don't remember there being a time like, why doesn't their family look like my family? It just was understood that all families look really different. So I was adopted at a month old, and my siblings have all different stories on how how and when they were adopted, but I was adopted at a month old. My parents were really praying for a girl after having three boys, and so um, I think that I'm probably their favorite. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, So just growing up with that, there's something about how... I just really loved about my parents. It's so funny because you can articulate this stuff so much better now. Like, you don't even know what's happening in life when you're a kid. But, like, looking back, I just feel like my parents did such a good job of explaining the whys and whats and everything without even really us asking questions about it. My biological mother's story is that she was too young. Like, she was, she was 18 years old. No, she was 16 years old, and my biological father was 18 years old. And she was too young, but she didn't believe in abortion, which, praise the Lord, because in the 90s, as a 16-year-old girl, like, what in the world? Like, that would be the scariest thing. My parents really, really explained well the concept of she loved you so much that she chose to, like, save your life. Like, she, she did the most selfless thing that any human being can ever do and I just like that just like really just stuck like that part of my story stuck not the fact that she couldn't keep me or she wasn't you know I just loved the fact that I was like wow I I was loved and that's why Mm -hmm. that's why that I'm here today and so some people get caught up with like that the beginning part of the story but the way that I see it is that now is that I was always meant to be with the parents that I have It doesn't matter what womb I came from, but (laughs) my parents were praying and believing and had faith and God is good. And I showed up on the scene, (laughs) showed up on the scene. And it was like, (laughs) here, here she is as if my parents, my parents were pregnant with me, the parents that I have, my adopted parents, they were pregnant with me in their prayers and in their, um, like longings and wishings and all of the all of those things and then I I came and so I lo- I actually love that part of my story I love that it that that just stuck instead of what could have stuck the negative parts or whatever of these stories that you hear yeah so I grew up with three older brothers and I think that all of us take this part of our story very differently and we might even subcon there's subconscious things in our lives where probably we could trace back to the idea of being adopted like I'm sure some decisions have been made out of maybe feeling like not wanted or not loved or whatever that whole lie which is which it which can be the story for some people but I think that something else that just stuck out to me as I've gotten older is like my parents always desired to have kids, but my parents' story as to why they chose adoption was not ever a highlight reel. Like, that wasn't something that they talked about. That wasn't mm-hmm. something 
the in that being said, my mom, my mom was unable to have children. But the truth is, like, it wasn't until like I was like in my teens that I like started to like wonder like, and I fe- and I was in a healthy place then too, like just to be able to ask like why, why weren't you why why didn't you guys have your own children or whatever? And then it came up. So it was never like a four story of my parents like you know what we weren't able to have kids and Mm. so like to present in a way of like a plan b or like you were the backup that was Mm. never ever ever and that really isn't even their heart and like i really honor that my parents were thoughtful in that way to not really go there like just and i I don't even think they really even had the intentions of protecting but they massively protected and, and i forgot to say this but my parents are devout, devout Christians, lovers of the Lord, just raised us in that house to go after the Lord. And so when I was adopted and then brought into salvation, like I was brought in at a very young age, I think I was six years old. And so I think that even being saved so young had something to do with my understanding of being adopted. Like those two obviously connect because Mm -hmm. we know that when we come into salvation, we're being adopted as sons into the kingdom of God. And, um, I don't know. I just think that that for some somehow the Lord just graced me with that understanding and that clarity of what those two things are and that not only do I was I adopted in the natural but the God of heaven and earth sent his son so that I could be saved yet again. Like mm-hmm. what is this? It's pretty pretty wild and such an awesome feeling and I I hope I never grow weary or numb to that understanding ever because it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. And we just kind of forget like that Jesus died for us, that we could come into family. But the truth is, as I've gotten older, is God is all about family. Like he, he will do anything. He is relentless about bringing us into family. And I can see that he's done that in my life. And it's, it's pretty wild. I would love to hear more about kind of what the Lord has, what does the future look like for you? Because you are such an exhorter. You are such an incredible leader and speaker. And so I would love to hear kind of what the Lord has put on your heart for the future. What do you see kind of spoken over your life in terms of speaking out about adoption and how, you know, the powerful link between how the Lord says that we're adopted into his family. I mean, yeah. this is the connection between earthly adoption and heavenly adoption is, it can't be ignored, but right. often it just gets glazed over, right. I feel like. The word adoption is so thrown around because right. that's it's in the Bible. We kind of become desensitized to it. We're like, yes, of course. I mean, you know, I'm in the family of God. He adopted me in. I was lost yeah. and now I'm found. Right. It's a beautiful concept, but I feel like unless you've actually experienced it in your own life, it is very hard to make that heart connection from heaven to earth. Something that I struggle with is when I meet people who hear my story or I share just even this basic, like, yeah, I was adopted or whatever, and people say, oh my goodness, you're just so normal. (laughs) And it... And it's like, and and honestly, like, again, it's, it's the innocence of, of that. But the reality of that statement is people who have been adopted don't understand the truth that they've picked up on. I will say that broadly, that's not everybody, right? But there's less of those who, um, are content, are content and like love life and even love that part of their story, you know? And Um, so I think when I t- like tell people, it's just like, I've never, you know, people will say, I've never heard somebody speak so highly of it or that you've had such a hmm. positive experience, if you want to call it, yeah. which is, you know, I can step back and make jokes about it. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's actually very sad because the father's goal is to turn all the bad things and turn them good. And he made a way, like it was, this was the plan mm-hmm. A to save the world. Mm-hmm. So he chose in the natural, in my opinion, to have a plan A to save the world. Obviously, we know there are loads of people who are lost, loads of orphans. We know there's loads of widows. And I just think like if I could do anything, it would be to be a mouthpiece, I suppose, for spiritual, natural, whatever, that there is a place that you can reach. There's an invitation to be found. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the world that we live in, 
everybody's lost. Like everyone, where do I go? What do I mean? On the most basic level, what do I do with my life? Who am I? But you find those answers in being found and the hands are wide open and God just freely has given that to us and gives that to us. And so if I could do anything, like I would love to, even if it's as simple as when I talk to people, just be a light in that way and share, share. It's just a means of sharing the Mm -hmm. gospel. If I can help, um, bring that on a level, like on a natural level to help people like as a doorway to an understanding yeah. that we were made to be found, mm-hmm. like we were made to be loved. And sometimes that looks like not what you think it's going to look like. And that's probably for the best, honestly, yeah. <laughs> because it's it's just amazing. I, I feel like you have such a special perspective too, because you are, you're not only adopted, but All of your siblings are adopted. For you to have this mindset coming out of a dynamic like that, I think speaks to, of course, the goodness of the Lord, but the humility and the patience and the commitment and the kingdom vision that your parents had. And so I just, you know, I would love to hear about how kind of your personal relationship with your parents, because yeah. I feel like that is such a key part of, totally. I mean, you're still close with them. Yeah, my parents are amazing. We'll start there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I completely echo with what you're saying. I mean, you nailed it. They're full of faith, obviously. <laughs> like they just, they did a wild thing. And again, at that time, it wasn't like a super common <laughs> trendy, let's call it, thing to do. I mean, I know since I've gotten older and, you know, I ask questions as they come, my parents are always super, super open to answer. There was never a time like, we're not telling you that or we're not. They were like, if you ever have questions, ask them. And I remember I probably didn't really start like really asking until I was like in high school. And they weren't devastating answers that I came up to or came up against. It was just like, why is this? Or do I know anything about my biological Mm -hmm. dad? Or what is he like? Or things like that. So that was cool. I enjoyed that. We had, we just had that relationship where they were just honest from the jump. And I, and I think that that changes things too for a lot of kids, but you know, I think it speaks a lot of my parents that they went outside of the norm to do the thing that God asked them to do Mm -hmm. and the things that they were believing for. And uh, I believe my parents had calling on their life to be a mother and a father and and they weren't going to let anything stand in their way to do it because it just was what it was. Like, there was no questions asked with it. And it's funny because I know that they had backlash, like familial backlash from their, at least my mom's side. She talked about, um, and now, obviously, it's just (laughs) not like that at all. But again, not, not going against them choosing to take a path where this is now, this is what we're going to build a family and this is what it's going to look like um, during that time. And then having to deal with familial, you know, discouragement, like, uh, I don't agree with that or, you know, whatever. It's so hard. It's so hard, (laughs) but they were like, whatever, we're doing it. This is what we're supposed to do. And the family that had the issue, like, they love us. Like Mm -hmm. they, it's no question about it. But again, like even that just shows like, that's God. Like that's just them Mm -hmm. representing God and showing, showing more people what it is and can look like to love. They're just amazing. I really can't even speak high enough about them and the way they raised us. And I think that that, that is, that is true. Like raise a child in the way they ought to go. My parents did that and they held us with open hands. So we all have taken different paths in life and we've all made different decisions and had bents towards different things. And, um, they they taught us the truth and they led us and they lived by conviction but there was never like they trusted the lord they trusted the holy spirit with our lives and um i think probably today they still pray for us and surrender certain things and just you know and that just that's just what a what a life of being a christian is like and they've got to they've had the opportunity to do that with their kids and they've done an incredible job mm-hmm. like they're amazing <laughs> three boys but just all the things that come with that and at the end of the day, like you're saying, biological or not, we're all broken. And so being broken people as parents raising broken children who are coming from a place mm-hmm. that, like the bond from birth was broken. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones that are standing in the gap to bring into back to love. Like that was, the, like it's just such a beautiful thing yeah. that they they played such a pivotal role in that process. 
Um, and I can just see God all through it. And I was a magnet to the truth of it and the love of it. I love love, but it just <laughs> felt like I, I want that part of my story. I want, I want that thing that feels good. Like on the most basic level as a child, it must have just been like, man, that feels good. I like that part of that story. Like yeah. I like that you're honoring this woman like in this way that's saying she loved you so much. Mm-hmm. And that was really the truth for all of my siblings. They loved you so much that they knew one way or another, either they were inept to take care of you or they were just not well, whatever it was. And so when I think about adoption, I just like, like a love that goes out of its way. Like there's so many reasons why I should not be here today. And for whatever reason, God wanted to make sure I was. And he used that woman who gave birth to me and my parents to make it happen. Like I could have lived a very different life had that not been a part of my story. And it's truly <laughs> my redemption. And so I, I want to make the most of it. And so, yeah. My parents are amazing. <laughs> Let me just come back around. My parents are amazing. They're Full great. Full circle. Full circle. <laughs> I love the sort of picture that you painted with your parents being the ones that stood in the gap of love and also the absolute humility and grace that they have to honor your biological mom. Because I feel like that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. No, totally. <laughs> and that's really hard. What a struggle maybe that was to have to, you know, speak well of somebody that she maybe knew better than you. And and that's just that's just a love that goes out of its way. And and she loved your mother as well as you. So yeah. I, I don't know. That's just yeah. That tugs at my heartstrings. <laughs> well, and I th- and I think that my mom loved this woman. Yeah. Like, you were the reason, like, I get to have a child, you know? And I think, I mean, I could get emotional about it, too, so we could just need to grab some tissues here in a second. (laughs) But I, especially as I'm in my mid-20s and things like that, and I have so many friends that have such a deep, deep longing to have a child, and whether they have struggles or not, like, that whole process breaks my heart. Um, Mm -hmm. And I just think that what a joy it would be to finally be able to hold a child after praying and believing and all of those things. And again, it it could look different, but it never looked different to God. Like that was the plan that he sought out. And yeah, I think it's so funny that you mentioned that too, because I have, I'm the only one of my siblings that has the desire to meet my biological Mm -hmm. family. I like, if nothing else, just want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And my parents always said to us, like, there's not a day that goes by that they don't think about you which of course like now that I'm older you know what I mean like you made this really really like you probably live with the question of did I make the right decision are they okay Mm -hmm. so I would love to like in the next year or so be able to just connect with them and be like you did and I just want to tell you thank you which would well talk about the waterworks that that's (laughs) going to be but I mean just to have that opportunity because to say like thank you for choosing life on the most basic level thank you for for being selfless because of that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm able to be here today. Like I'm alive. I'm living my best life. And if, if they don't know, like sharing like the goodness of God in my life because of them being the witness that you are and the testimony that you are just a living testimony. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And it's because of them. Like Mm -hmm. that's, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. And then I think some people are like, well, aren't you, aren't you afraid of what could happen with meeting? And no, I'm not. (laughs) I think it it can only be good. Like if nothing else, I've got a friend out of it. And like, I just can't imagine being in her shoes. Like I would want to know. It's just such a mystery that I'm like, I just want to like unsolve it. And even again with, with God, it's like, I want to see more of you and your glory and how you chose this life. And there's more to the story. And I'm just curious. Yeah, that's great. I feel like the, the path that you're on is to be a voice about this. I feel really strongly about that. I feel like you feel strongly about yeah. that. I would love to speak to those who have been adopted, encourage them, encourage you, whoever you are out there, just to, that God loves you. That sound, that can sound like such a blanket statement, like sure he does. Yeah, we know that. That's just facts. But the truth is that you were chosen. You weren't a last resort. You were always the plan. You are always the plan despite what, despite any circumstance, despite what anybody's even told you, you are always the plan A. For 
husbands and wives, mothers who are, you know, fearful of this idea of adoption, if you're feeling that, I would encourage you to really pray, pray into that and what God could possibly be asking you to do and to not be afraid of it, but seek, seek it out and ask God about it. Don't be afraid of it. He wasn't afraid of it. He wasn't afraid to send his son. He wasn't afraid to bring us into adoption. He desired family. So if you're sitting, listening to this and you're desiring to have children, you could already have children. You know what I mean? Like you could have Mm -hmm. whatever, but God's laid adoption on your heart. Just like really, really pray into that and just know that it's also on his heart. Who he is. Where's the Kleenex? Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. I absolutely loved hearing your story. So I just want to thank you for opening up and sharing. It's it's a really powerful thing that you're sharing. It's a really unique testimony. Mm-hmm. It's it's your life, it's your testimony, and you know, not even the choices that you've made. Choices that were made before you were even wow. here. Yeah. So wow. it really is God's God's plans instead of our best life plans, and that's mm-hmm. kind of what we're glorifying here. Yeah. Which I love. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been Radiant Stories. Click subscribe to get a brand new story delivered to you every Monday.